Two weeks to go in the Gallagher Premiership and it is absolutely all to play for. There are still eight teams in a chance with semi-final qualification and therefore a chance of being champions. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the show and there's loads more great content coming for you here on the Amateur Rugby Podcast. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any of that. But here we go, week 17, the current state of play, Leicester Tigers in eighth are mathematically still in with the chance, but it would take an absolute miracle for them to qualify, so we might as well count them out. Exeter and Sale, both in the last chance saloon in six and seven, they got to win this week and next week, I think, to really stand a chance, but above that, it is all to play for, not just in terms of qualification, but those really vitally important home semi-finals, which not only give a playing advantage, but also, you know, it's great to just host those and get the financial advantage as well. Okay, let's get into the fixtures straight away, starting on Friday night up at Newcastle, where Bath are the visitors. Now, Newcastle uh, this week have signed a fly half called Wilkinson, so rolling back the years yet there, young Kieran is joining from Leicester Tigers. Uh, on a one-year deal, so that's an interesting one. Like, not many players are signing one-year deals at the moment. I think Steve Diamond is maybe, you know, making people really earn their future contracts and, you know, it's almost like a trial, really, is a one-year deal. So, anyway, good luck to him up there. They've been talking about, you know, getting a win this season. Still winless, of course, in the league. Uh, so, this is against Bath, who are in third. Will it be this Friday night? Falcons, though, have got Gloucester in their final game, which might be a better opportunity. We'll see when that one comes around. <clears throat> and they're playing Bath, who are in third. And just this week, Johan van Graan has signed a new contract, uh, which is committed into the club until the end of the 2029-2030 season. So that's a huge deal. That is stability. Um, and I think that kind of thing can really give a club and the players that feeling of, of security and just it can enhance performances. So that's a really interesting one to see. Bath, as I said, are in third, so it's still very much up to play for for them. And they've got Northampton uh, in the final game. So a tough run in uh, after this week. I think Newcastle will put up a really big fight. I think they'll be spirited. I think it's their final home game of the season. They'll be desperate for a win, desperate for a, a performance uh, for their fans, their loyal fans, however, I think Bath are too good. I think they will take it and I think they'll be going into that final weekend looking like heading for a semi-final. Bath to take it by 8 to 15 points, I would say. Also on Friday night, also up north, Sale Shirts versus Leicester Tigers. And this is a real crunch game. Sale in sixth, Leicester in eighth. Uh, like I said, Tigers do mathematically have a chance, but typically not. For sale, Tom Curry is nearing fitness again, which is remarkable after the horrific injury he had. There's lots of videos up, up on social media at the moment of him doing sprint training and all that kind of good stuff. Sale are on an absolute roll as well. They were kind of out of it a little bit, but they've got bonus point victories in each of their last three games. And they're going to need to continue that through to the end of the season, really to have a chance of a title here because they've got Saracens in their final game. Leicester, uh, this week, Dan Cole won the Triumph of the Month award for Leicester Tigers, uh, which is a, a nice little fan-voted thing uh, in reflection of him becoming the most capped premiership player, I think, in Tigers uh, and it's, they said on the website that Dan Cole represents a true triumph. Well done, Coley. Great work for the front row. Uh, Tigers have got Exeter in their final game. So they could potentially be a little bit of a, a kingmaker here. You know, if they beat Sale and then lose to Exeter, you know, that would really help Exeter out. However, I don't see it. A mathematical chance is a tiny thing. And psychologically... Players just can't switch that on. Like, they know. They know that they've got almost no chance. And to be able to get the level of performance that they'll need against this Sale team, I just don't see it. Sale will continue their great form. Uh, they're looking strong in terms of fitness and availability as well. I think they will get the five points they need to continue their charge towards playoff spots. 
Moving to Saturday now, we have Northampton versus Gloucester. Saints in first and still flying high at the top of the table versus Gloucester in ninth. Uh, both teams played in Europe this weekend. Gloucester winning to make uh, the Challenge Cup final. However, Saints, with a really disappointing, particularly first half display at Leinster, dropped out at the semi-final stage. For Northampton, Oli Slytome is currently progressing through his return to play protocols for uh, a concussion. And he's, up, yeah, they're hoping he'll be back available. Also back available is Paul Hill. Uh, the tight head, uh, so it'll be interesting to see whether he comes back in, although both tight heads have been playing well for Northampton, so it might be not used this weekend. Still struggling with some injuries, though, with the likes of Rory Hutchison, Lewis Ludlam, Tom Pearson, Berger Odendahl, all still out. But good news, they signed Tom West, the loose head this week from Saracens. So he's a good signing. He played well for Wasps when he was there. Hasn't featured too much for Saris, but a good, good player. And this week also for Northampton, Henry Pollock was named under 20 Six Nations Player of the Tournament. So, heck of a prospect there at open side and great news for Saints as well. Phil Dalson said after the weekend that he was both proud and frustrated about the Saints' exit. You know, they came back and battled and stayed in the fight, even though their performance levels, you know, their accuracy in particular was poor in that first half. So, I, I totally understand what he means. This, I think, is a great opportunity for Saints to nail a home semi-final. They've got Bath in their final game and they're going up against Gloucester, who are seriously focusing on Europe. I cannot imagine Gloucester getting any kind of a performance out this week. Um, I think they're going to save that for Newcastle in their final home game. And I see Saints winning this one pretty damn comfortably, to be honest. Another game on Saturday, Bristol versus Saracens. Bristol in fourth against Saracens, who are second. Bristol this week have just announced their budgets for next season. And as one of the richest clubs with the you know super wealthy owner, they've announced that they're actually going to be well below the salary cap. Uh, they're just readjusting their budgets. So that's a really interesting kind of development in terms of the game overall. And they've also announced some ridiculous stats this week. They lead the league in so many things. Tries scored, meters made, post-contact meters, offloads, defenders beaten and clean breaks. Which, as we know, and it has been the case for a while now, watching Bristol is a thoroughly exciting, exciting experience. And, especially right now, because they've won every one of their last six matches in the Premiership Rugby season. They've got Quinns in the final game, and they, uh, like, uh, like Sale, are going to have to continue that run. Because I think any defeat could really be crucial for them, particularly against Quinns next week. Um... Saracens, who their big news, I guess, is still Billy Vunapola incident. I've been talking about him a lot recently. It's because I think, you know, at his best, he was a phenomenal player. And I'm, I'm a bit worried about him in that respect. I want him to have a great finale at Saracens. I want him to find something amazing going forwards. And, yeah, hopefully this was just a blip for Billy and, and he'll be back on form soon. They've got Sale in the final game. So, as I mentioned before, just so many exciting fixtures and it's going to go down to the wire for a lot of teams. And I think this game could be really difficult to call. I think Saracens are going to try and stifle Bristol, as Leicester did the previous game. Uh, but Bristol managed to get that win. Maybe that was the game that Bristol was supposed to lose, but still got the win. Who knows? Uh, Bristol at home, though, they are going to go and they're going to play and play and play. We know that. Will Saracens suffocate in defence, be able to stop them? Oh my God, I just don't know. I think it's so tough to call, but I'm going to go Bristol. I think Bristol will just find enough space. Saracens aren't looking as imposing. They're not looking as ominous as they have done in recent seasons or certainly previously. I think Bears. I think Bears are going to take it, but I think it will be fairly tight at the end. And last game of the weekend, also on Saturday. No Sunday game this weekend, which is a massive disadvantage to the visitors of Exeter Chiefs, Harlequins, who have a six-day turnaround after losing to Toulouse in the European Cup last week. I, I wonder what the reason is for that. Like, maybe there's almost always a Sunday game, so I'm wondering whether it's just in preparation for next weekend that nobody gets, like, an extra day's prep, or only a six-day turnaround for next weekend, the final day of the Premiership season. I don't know, but it's not doing Harlequins too many favours in this fixture. Exeter, who are in seventh, 
very much in the last chance saloon. They have to win their final two games of the season. Just this week, Gareth Steenson is leaving the club after 16 years there as a player and a coach. And it sounds like he might be heading away from rugby altogether as he returns back to Ireland. They are at Leicester in their final game, so I suspect they'll have a good chance in that game. Leicester, I can't see anything, but they're just going to fizzle away. As I said, motivation is massive, and it's a very difficult thing to just generate for, for no real reason. Harlequins in fifth, again, very much need to win both their final two games of the season because they've got Bristol in their final game, who are very much at the same part of the table as them. Danny Kerr announced this season that he's signed on for another year. Another year, DC. Fair play. Um, still playing great rugby. I think he's going to have huge uh, competition from Will Porter next season, definitely. Maybe even towards the end of this season as well. Porter's done brilliantly well. Be interesting to see how Quinns use them. I wonder with Exeter, though, Rob Bax has been talking about a lot about how they've overachieved and they're ahead of where they expected them to be, all this kind of thing. And I wonder if that is in the players' mentality as well. I wonder if they'll be able to switch that to, you know, it's almost like we've got nothing to lose. We're ahead of where we were anyway. So is the motivation going to be as great? These things are all fine details. And you know what? I think Quinns have got a bit, about, a bit more about them this season. I think they're going to really want to challenge for this title. And I think they're going to go to Exeter and get the win. Again, another very tough game, but Quinns have shown a lot of backbone this year. Uh, scrum, maul, line out, they've got a lot. So I think they might be able to withstand Exeter. And I think when they find the looseness in the game, they'll be able to score enough points to get the win and put them closer to a semi final qualification. Alrighty, that's week 17 predictions done. That's what I think. Those are just my opinions. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Any Predictions you disagree with, any sort of factors for each of these teams that I've missed out on. Uh, yeah, as I say, let me know and we'll have a friendly conversation down there in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. It helps other people find it and you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next and do not forget to get out and play.